So if you've ever asked anyone that uses a fountain pen why they choose to do so, because we have a collective hive mind sort of thing, we're all going to give you the same jumble big glop of answers. It's probably going to range from it feels nice to use, it's really economical because you can just refill it, and it's just way better than the ballpoint for those exact reasons. Now, this pen here is probably going to be a pen that follows that rule pretty much to the point. This is a pen that has lasted at least um, 40 years. It's at least 40 years old. This pen was bought sometime in the 1970s by either my grandpa or great-grandpa. What this is, is the Schaefer no-nonsense flat top calligraphy pen, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a pen that's been in production for quite some time now. Um, production started late 60s or early 70s, sometime around there and it's stuck with us ever since. Nowadays, because Schaefer's, I don't know, been bought up by some other company, you can't really buy this from Schaefer, well, on their website. Their website's pretty downright awful, but I've seen this in pen stationery shops as a calligraphy set by Schaefer, and I've actually seen quite a lot of rip-offs by no-name brands using this exact same design, well, with the only change really being to the grip section. They've now added a rubber grip section, but this pen here, made by Schaefer, USA, and it's lasted quite a long time. Um, because it's not a new pen, it's old, I don't really have many specs and facts on it. I'll give you just a really basic rundown on it. So this pen is sporting an old-fashioned um, italic nib. It's sort of oblique. I don't know, it doesn't say oblique on it, but what I'm thinking is maybe due to the years of use, because this is a stainless steel nib, maybe the way that everyone's used it over the years, it's sort of um, eroded away the edge to sort of an oblique. It's certainly not straight. Um, obliques cut at an angle, usually about an angle this much, maybe 30 degrees. This is a slight angle. Maybe it's because of that, maybe it's just because this was made in the days when everyone was still using these pens, they were pumped out, mass production, and maybe it was just cut on a slight angle, but it is certainly not straight. And um, as an, what, it's an, it says it's a fine italic nib, and what I can really gauge is, I've seen these pens nowadays, in fact, one of my, cous my cousin has one. Um, you can get medium italics and all that, which means just um, the size on the top is bigger. Um, you can tell I'm an expert in this. Trust me, I've found pens. Um, so, if we take off the um, cap, pretty bloody ugly cap. In fact, the whole design isn't exactly to woo everyone, it's just a cylinder, nothing spectacular about, spectacular, apart from this lovely little, um, well, it's a classic Schaefer um, ball clip. Take it off, not much to see. Um, you put it down, you're greeted with this pretty bland grip. It's all plastic. You hold it, you obviously grip it. Um, the grip is comfortable, nothing amazing, though it's not bad. Um, it's probably around the same size as a Jinhao X750. Closest thing I can say it to, it's not a super thick grip, it's not super thin. Here you have these threads which are slightly uncomfortable um, to hold on because this is a well, twist cap with threads and everything. Um, one thing I will say about this is, this has the Schaefer converter and all that, so it's not the best converter in the world. But I don't exactly have one, so what I've actually done is made this an eyedropper pen because I can't be bothered to buy a Schaefer converter for about 15 bucks. Um, nib, it's not really flexible, even though it's a sort of vintage pen. Um, it's not all that flexible, um, though the ink flow is quite all right. Um, if I'm honest, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone to actually write with. It's not an everyday writing pen. You sort of could if you write with a double broad every day, 
but I use a fine every day and there's no way I could write with this. Um, the text that you're going to get is going to be gigantic. However, because this is an italic nib, um, you're going to get some very, very nice natural line variation. And of course, because it's um, cut like this, it's going to be incredibly smooth. So retail price of this, I can find one on eBay for about 15 bucks. Just because it's vintage doesn't make it expensive. You can pick one of these up from the shop new in a calligraphy set for about 30 bucks. That's what I've seen them go for. Anyway, let's go for a writing sample. Okay, so we have the Schaefer No-Nonsense Calligraphy Pen. So let's get this started. So this pen is using Parker Quink because, well, Parker Quink Black. Reason being, every time I make a pen and eyedropper, I'll always use this because I'll be using a metric butt ton of ink. Um, a lot of people are divided about this ink, but I think it works perfectly fine. So here we have. Okay, um, last thing that I didn't mention is nib, what's well, italic fine. Anyway, let's get on to writing sample. All right, that's the writing sample. As I said before, um, you're gonna get some lovely, nice and natural line variation. Um, that being said, you are gonna sacrifice, um, well, the smallness of your writing. It's gonna have to be big. Usually when I write, I got one of my favorite pens, Parker 78G. Um, my writing is easily two thirds of the size. That being said, that doesn't mean that it's not a nice writing experience. It's actually really nice. Really, really smooth writing, and the writing just looks beautiful. Even if you don't have naturally nice writing, um, this lovely, nice, natural line variation means that it just kicks it up just a notch. Um, as well as that, um, Something that you do want to look out for is that you need to hold this pen at the right angle. Um, this is fine, however, holding it like this will cause it to sort of skip, sort of here. And if you hold it here and try and do this, you will cut into the paper. So when using a pen like this, italic nibs, you really do need to make sure that you hold it the pen to the paper with the correct orientation. Um, so if we do a, well, wetness, wetness isn't really um, going to be tested because it is an eyedropper pen, so it is going to be slightly more wet, but never mind, we'll do it anyway. And it's wet enough, not the wettest pen, but it is wet enough. Um, looking at actual line variation, this is what you'll get naturally. And this is what you'll get with pressure. You'll get a little bit more, but you really don't need to push down that much. And that is probably the maximum you're gonna get. Let me just follow the hairline. Yeah, that's pretty much the maximum amount you're going to get. In terms of reverse writing, it's not really an option here. It will cut into the paper this way, and it will just, um, the ink will stop flowing. So reverse writing, not an option. I'm not even going to finish that. Um, so thoughts on the pen. It's really, really nice to write with. 
Um, could I write a page with it? Yes. Would I write an essay with it? No. If I was making notes for myself, I would love to write with this pen, but essay writing, no. Cheap paper, no, because this does, well, this can cut into the paper, and I've noticed that on cheap paper, it cuts in quite a lot more easily. Um, yeah, wonderful pen. I love italic nibs.